Hi, good morning. Welcome to Creative Innovation Centre's online workshops. Today we'll be exploring brush and ink. During the session, I will show some examples of mark making and how to employ them in the creation of a still life drawing. There are many ways of using the brush to create various marks on a surface and to create the illusion of form and texture. Here I'll show some examples of various marks you can make using brush and ink. Firstly, I want to show you a selection of brushes that I use and these range from hog's hair to synthetic and sable brushes. These I've used in oil painting, acrylic painting and watercolour, as well as ink. And as you can see, some of these brushes here have been used extensively for ink drawing. The brushes I'm going to use in this session today is a Chinese brush that I've used for calligraphy, a pentail brush pen, which comes with its own cartridge of ink that sits inside, a small flat brush, a favourite brush of mine that's been with me for over 20 years that I still use, and some brushes where I've manipulated the brush heads by cutting them to create specific points for specific, specific drawing reasons. The ink that I'll be using is just a standard calligraphy ink. You can buy that in any store. And for the purposes of the session today, I've watered down this ink slightly in this bottle just to allow it to flow easier. Because sometimes you can find that calligraphy ink, because it's being mainly used for writing, is slightly thicker. So by watering it down, makes it a little easier to use for drawing. The first thing I'm going to show is how to use a Pentel brush pen. As I say, it comes with its own ink, which sits in a cartridge inside, much like a fountain pen. It has a nice tip there, and it makes some wonderful marks. And the good thing with drawing with a brush is that you can vary the line from very thin to very thick. This lends itself well when creating the illusion of depth within a drawing. So if you want to add more solidity, you can. And here I'm just creating some cross hatching. It's also quite handy when creating the illusion of shade and tone. So much like some of the ways that inkers use brush and ink in comic strip work. So I can fill in a large amount of space and then create some feathering techniques. Creating the illusion of moving from dark to light. I can further enhance this with some cross hatching. Creating more of a transition between light and dark. With a Chinese brush, it has a larger area for ink. And this is wonderful for creating specific marks where I want to fill in large amounts of space. You can either hold a brush conventionally, as you would a pen, or you can hold it more like a wand. And by changing the speed, you can create a wide range of marks. Of course, other ways of making brushes, uh, making mark, no. That's right, there was a cut, there was a gap there, wasn't there? Yeah. Other ways of making marks, could be just spotting.
drawing shapes, hatching. Again, like the Pentel brush, you can create thin lines as well as thick lines. So a Chinese brush is a very, very good brush to own. With my favorite brush, it has a wider end. And what I like to do with this brush is to push. And as you will note, you create these wonderful marks here. So if I was drawing a landscape and I wanted to draw a tree line, I can use that effect. creating the illusion of a forest in the distance, for example. A flat end brush is very good for creating very controlled, regular shaped marks. So if I was drawing a building, and I wanted windows. I can use these to create these forms of marks too. So as you can see, there's a wide range of marks that can be made depending on how you use a brush, whether it's conventionally like a pen or to the side like a magic wand. As you will see, I've set up a small still life. Here I've just chosen some objects from nature. Here are some leaves, uh, a plant with some feathery, seedly type flowers, and some shells from a beach. Now, I've chosen these specifically because of the different textures that you can see in here that we're going to try and represent using a brush. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is do a sketch lightly in pencil, just to basically lay out the general forms. And then I'll go straight in using the brush. In this case, I will use a combination of this Pentel brush, the Chinese brush, and the flat brush. And hopefully, uh, each of these brushes will create the marks to invoke each of these objects. our drawing from the still life here. I didn't want to spend too long being too finicky with all the details because I generally just wanted to look at the specific uh, light and shadow areas and the textures and the tones and colours and try and work out how I was going to represent them as a mark on a surface. Now, as you can see, I started off with the Pentel brush, which I used as a general drawing tool just to lay 
the basics um, after sketching lightly with a pencil. That way then I can lay the groundwork of where I would add some of the tones and shadows using the other brushes. With the Chinese brush, that allowed me to fill in a lot of the areas where the shadows are, as well as being able to just dot a lot of marks to create the illusion of these seedlings. And then I finished off using just the flat brush just to draw some of these lines and, and uh, join up some of these broken lines uh, just to give it a little bit more form. But overall, it's about the process of what I was looking at and reinterpreting as a drawing, which in itself has become fairly abstract. But if I was to spend more time, if I was to sit here for half an hour, I could get more into the details. Um, and I could also think about maybe using different color inks as well later on to uh, differentiate the different objects that I'm looking at. But overall, it's about using a brush, how I can use the brush and the different ways of making marks through just using a brush instead of a pen or a pencil. Here are a few examples of some work I've done in the past using a variety of brush and ink um, and in this case some pen as well. This is a comic strip page from uh, HMP Temeraire. And as you can see I've employed a very fine brush and ink, as well as some pen marks from a dip pen. In this image of a missing Libyan, I've employed the Pentel brush pen on Papyrus. In this image of an MP, I again have used a Pentel brush pen. As you can see, I've used it to create the different marks for hair, the scarf, the clothing. And in this image, I've used a standard triple uh, zero sable brush with Indian ink to create this short comic strip about the First World War. So these are just a few examples of different ways you can use a brush and ink to create drawings and illustrations in your work. So I hope you enjoyed today's session on using brush and ink and I hope it inspires you to explore these materials and tools. If you would like more information, we'll include a link where you'll be able to download a handout, which will go through some of the aims, objectives, and some of the examples that I showed of making marks. And if you want to share your work, do email the work that you create to Kick Kick so we can have a look. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.